Cool. This is an engine we're building. <laughs> yeah. For a customer. For a customer. And so we've got, this is a little 63 turbo. We sent the bearings off to uh, a company for a braidable coating. Line to line. Line to line. Because his crank was good, except it was worn about three thousandths undersize. Mm -hmm. But it was round. And, and you can't you, buy specific Corvair bearings. Main bearings. Not enough to get me the clearance that I wanted. Yeah. So I sent these off. I had them put a specific thickness of coating on. And now we're going to lay it in, lay the crank in, put the other half on, torque it up, and check the clearances with some plastic gauge. So, this is the... We've already checked that the surface here is nice and clean. Yeah, we'll have to wipe these off and they are perfectly clean. And these are standard bearings that we had some material added to take up the clearance. Like that, standard. Did the same on the rods, but not as much because they weren't quite as... Are these, these are... Yeah. They're all Clark's bearings. Where else do you get yeah, fresh you bearings? Find new old stock, but yeah. those are rare. Mm -hmm. And there's one set that are going to be... The oddball set is here, so I just gotta look at the port numbers. Yeah. Because it's supposed to have brown dye on the edge. A little bit. This doesn't appear to have brown dye. What is it? So these are, these are the, that's an oddball. Oh, they got numbers on your phone. Because I wrote numbers on them. So it goes two here, this is a two, this is correct. That's a 20-4. So that's a three. Is a 10-2. I don't know what these numbers are on the back here. I don't know what you wrote down. That's their, uh, unless that's just their, I thought I wrote numbers on them. That's a dash two. These are dash th four. These are dash fours. Okay, so that they're correct. Well, so yeah. Not really, because one. One and one, these are twos. This no. is the same. Is, is it? Yeah. I'm going to find out here in a minute. Is it? to find out here in a minute that's terrible <laughs> hey let me torque it up but we're not gonna roll it wait which one this is number one two one, three two, four three four okay mm -hmm. so now we're gonna get the crank we just it's not light no it's not it's amazing even this little bitty of an engine in it spin around that fast yeah that's straight six mercedes is this is stupid when you think about what kind of RPM that thing can turn and it weighs 50 pounds or something. Okay, we put a new... This is a test fit, by the way. This is not a <laughs> final install. <laughs> no, this just this is one of the things this you have to do on a Corvair. Is everything has to be test fit. Let's turn this so we don't have any oil holes up. Oh, this way. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. about as... They just enter... They jump around. Let me get some... Uh, I see lots of oil, so oil holes up on there. Well, I'm going to run a plastic gauge across it, so I didn't want the oil hole being in the way of the plastic gauge. What's the plastic gauge for? So you place that in there. Yes. And then when you put the... Put the other case half on, case it half squeezes on. that. And we can't roll this, because if we roll it... Yeah, they'll, they'll fall down and smother. Stay put, stay put. It's sticking to regions. my finger more than ever. And you don't oil this thing at first, because... About that, some of the clearance. Yeah, that's a pretty big nick right there. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that's from. It could actually be. Yeah, there's marks in the other half from that, so that's mm. actually this engine had never been apart, so that's from assembly. Big burrs up here, and there's it is okay to deburr the surface because you want it to be very very smooth because it determines the clearancing of all the bearings. And if you saw the other video, these are the cr these are the cases that we lasered. Whoa. And so how does that, so that works by, it crushes it down and then you can use this chart. Quite accurate, yeah. You use the chart to find what the, what the what clearance the is. Clearance is, yeah. Uh -huh. What are you looking for? What value? Uh, thin. Do you want to put the bearings in this thing before you put it on? Oh, you have to, yeah. yeah. And when I, when I put my thumb in the center, I'm pushing it left to right, this way and that way to get not it just to make down. sure it's seated within the saddle. Yeah, not just straight down. No. 
Yeah, this was an original engine that had never come apart. You see that movement that mm -hmm. I just did there. So you can just make sure it's really seated within that. No, these are deeper than that side. So it's actually <laughs> holes. The, the main journal bore is not exactly not centered squared on the between these center line of the, no. That's why it's very important not to screw up the surface or yeah. and the... You, and you cannot swap case halves with another case half. No. Because these are machined as a matching pair. Yeah. Clearance you're gonna get? Mm-hmm. Clearance? Yeah. See, so uh, this is proud and that's low. Hmm. That's that kind of accuracy that Insane. Chevy was striving for. Not. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty shitty, actually. Pretty shitty. Yeah, but it's all done by hand back then. Or on on machining centers. Yeah. So we're not worrying about the. Well, I mean, they they designed it that way so that you could so that they could, uh, you know, have one source of accuracy. Right, not have tolerances build up. So then you needed one machining operation. Hopefully that didn't move. No, the plastic gauge. But do they all come from the side? You do it either way. But usually the bolts come in from the left to the right. And this is right half. Where's the? Oh, you mean like stock? R. See, this is R, and this is L. You can tell by the way it is. God, we gotta get this trans out of the way. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, it's, it's stupidly heavy. Don't. Yeah. You get two more for that and that, and that's it. Okay. Don't, you kind of have to. Yeah, you gotta like cross your eyes just right. Or you just stand on your head. Yeah. You can't, can't see look. what you're doing. Yeah, you, you're quite a ways off. Am I? Yeah. And I'm not using any assembly lube or anything on these yet. I feel no holes back. There is one. <laughs> There's gotta be. I mean, I don't see any holes here. Oh my god, it's way over there. Yeah. It's on the opposite side of where I thought it was. Hey, look at that. Also, watch out for the dipstick tube. It'll smack you in the face. Okay, now. You want to torque it? Yeah, we're going to torque it to probably 50. What's the spec? 45 55. 45 55. Just do it to right in the middle. Why is there a range? Is it like if. If your clearance is more, then you should torque it more. Yeah, I don't or? know why they did that. I guess back in the day, they didn't have really nice torque wrenches. They oh, probably had a beam style torque wrench. Oh, it wasn't accurate enough. Well, they were, but you know, when you're when you're just pulling it and you're looking at a, oh, you need an adapter. Yeah, I do. I'll get it in a second. I'm just gonna when you move a bunch. Of stuff. I'm gonna pull it up with a ratchet so I can just feel them. Yeah. Oh, you want? The can you hold the back end? I just want to kind of feel. This cart is just perfectly in the way. Mm-hmm. Doesn't really help. It's that coming. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right down. No, I didn't even get me close. No, it's uh, it's doing okay. Yeah, it's just enough friction on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now that's that, and let's go, um, you know, I can get the little short torque wrench. Oh, don't worry about that. If you can, I don't know if you can see that. Don't worry about the, the chuck key and the chuck. Okay, so. I'm not doing anything here. No, I think these are torque. Yeah, these are torque. Oh, okay. Yeah, these would be fine. There's no slipping. No. It, you know that they talk about the sequence, <laughs> but really it's just a star pattern. You just don't want to. Sometimes you want to change the sequence. If we're really snug on the just, clearances, you just don't want to torque it across all the way. Or we'd make moving it up. What'd you just do? Twenty. Oh, now you're doing twenty-five. 50. What are you supposed to torque it in increments like this? Yeah. Really. Mm-hmm. Less, I'm just going everywhere. I know, I see that. I see, you are going across, kind of, but not exactly the same way every time. Every single one's a little different. It's kind of funny. Okay, now I think I'll go 35. No, 
it doesn't matter. Look at this one. That's it. And now it's time to take it back apart. That's great. Mm -hmm. And if this checks out good, we won't know. We might have to. These can be. Uh, these can be scuffed with scotch right now to uh, add clearance. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And we're going to loosen them up backwards. Yeah. But not all the way. So the same way you were going, but... No, it doesn't matter. You don't have a big... Uh, impact? No, 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 no. You do have a big impact, obviously, but... Uh, extension? No, this is perfect. I guess you don't, you don't have a big... It's not a big socket either. Oh, okay. It's right over the Three eighth socket. Yeah. Is this supposed to move? <laughs> no, it's just not tight enough. I'll oh, tighten it up. Okay, let me tighten it. And then one more. Last loosen. Okay. It's not the same way. You did this one or this one. I know. One. It doesn't matter now. It's not much torque. Work. No, I know. Cool. And how do you read this? Once it squeezes the... It'll be like wide like that, mm -hmm. and that'll tell you how thick it is? Yeah. Why are there so many on here? Cut that short. Oh, really? Okay. Third hand and arm was... Uh, mm -hmm. that was there. preoccupied. Yeah. I just don't want to drop a nut, have it ding the crank up or something. No. Like mark. Cool. That's that. And now pull it off and you look. Mm -hmm. Now I guess grab a rubber, little, the small rubber hammer. Oh, there we go. Yeah, the the, the dolls are over here. There's your clearances. Are they on the? Oh yeah, wow. Not in here. Oh, uh, they're probably oh, a little bit. Yeah, yeah they marked them there too. too. So let's see what we got. One thou? Yeah, one thou. Actually changes a little bit. It's got a streak to it. A tiny bit over one thou. Why don't you use the why don't you use the other parts of it to see how about a thousandth? A little less than a thou? That's about one and a half thou. Mm-hmm. Well, what what is that one exactly? Yeah, a thou. No, it's not. Yeah. No. It's not that one. It's in between oh, it's the in two. In between, oh yeah, one one and a quarter. Mm-hmm. Is that one again? That one's small. That one's got much more room. One and a quarter. And one and a half. That's that one's a definitely a thou. That one's, that's got a lot of. Yeah. And that, and that is too. That's good too. Yeah. These are, these are a little bit over one thou. So that's actually good. that's, that's, I wanted the nice tight engine because these crankcases guys will expand two to three thousandths at temperature. So if you think you can set them up at two thousandths clearance, like a small block Chevy or LS or whatever, uh, you're going to grow two to three, and then you're going to have a low oil pressure. So it's yeah. not good. You want to... Chevy initially sold these with undersized bearings. This particular engine had standard on one side and one under mm -hmm. on the other half to take up the clearance because of how the crank was initially ground. And uh looks like line to line supplied me with absolutely perfection on the bearing. Oh, yeah. The, the, the sprayed on... Uh, the coating is coating. Perfect. So we have really nice tolerances. And it'll be nice and snug. It'll abrade and get to just the and perfect go to a working running clearance. Yeah, they do the same on the pistons, which is primo. And skirt, yeah, piston skirts. Uh, yeah, and uh, so this is actually spot on for the for the main bearing clearances. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to show or do a close up of this for these guys? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Let's yeah, just yeah. do a close up real quick. So that's a tight one, but it depends on where. You want to measure. I, I wouldn't say that that crank was that far off. And I might want to, depends on how it spins, we'll try it. But you're there. A little over one, maybe one and a half. 
That's one and a half. You heard us say it. And this is one and a half. So, yeah, I think it's perfecto. Let's see how it wipes off. So, I've wondered if mineral spirits is the same as acrylic clean because it does exactly the same thing. Yep, so that's that. The next step is, yeah. What we have to do is we have to put the same on the rod bearings. Yeah. And check those because I had those coated. Of course, this thing was polished. That's why it looks nice and shiny. Mm -hmm. but it's a factory 63 turbo crank. Like I said it was a, an original engine, unmolested, untaken apart. Somebody I think did the heads, but I don't think they did anything in the bottom end at all. Uh, they did change lifters. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do each rod. We'll bolt each one on, torque it up. Same with the plastic gauge. Plastic gauge, yeah. And uh, check all the clearances. You should have about a thou and a half on those. Uh, you don't have to worry as much about that they on the rod bearings because that's the steel on the rod bearing isn't gonna expand two steel. to three thousandths. Yeah. You're gonna have fairly close clearances on that. And, and clearance so will you, stay the same. Yeah, so if you wanted to run two. If you wanted to run two, you could. You could, but you really need to have tight on the mains because of the expansion of the case. Otherwise, you will have low oil pressure. Yeah. And that's not good. Anyway, I think that's, uh, that's it for the time being. We'll, uh, we'll do more uh, tomorrow and uh, have you guys uh, some more video. See you.